fifth dimension. Please, Alexis. Thank you. Uh... Yeah, like That's that here. better. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> Okay, so first, uh, let me thank Francesco for the invitation. I mean, it is a great pleasure to, uh, to be here. And let me thank you for still coming for the last day of the week, Friday afternoon. So uh, I will try to not be too much boring. And, uh, and I will talk about uh, regularity for uh, what is called four spaces reaction diffusion system. And the most important thing, so this is a work with Goudon, Thierry Goudon in French, Goudon and uh, Caputo. Okay. So what, what is this system? So this is uh, the, the system I want to consider is the following. So you have uh, four spaces. So it's uh, uh, close to the systems that have been introduced by uh, uh, Laurent Devillette uh, at the beginning of this week. But here I consider the special one when you have actually four spaces. And this is, so you have two spaces, A1, A3, which are, uh, can be transformed in A2 and uh, A4, right? So I just choose to put the odd here and the even there, right? So that's, that's the thing. Okay. And then if you consider this, then you have the AI, I for one to four, which correspond to the mass uh, concentration of the species AI. And then let me just put the system there. So you have a system, so for I between one and four, Actually, for four, I could put them all four, but you will see there is a very nice structure, so it's pretty easy. And this is DTAI minus DI Laplacian AI equal QI of A, which means depends of A1, A2, A3, A4. And uh, so it's four equation. <clears throat> the DI are four numbers, usually different from each other. Right, this is a diffusion of, of each uh, part, uh, each uh, species, and then I have to give the QI, and QI of A is given like this, A1, if I put, it should be A2, A4, minus A1, A3. So that's it, that's the, that's the system. <clears throat> so you see it means that when you have A1, A2, it has exactly the uh, A1, A3 has exactly the same kind of, uh, I mean, have exactly the same reaction, right? This is A2, A4 minus A1, A3. And when you took a look at A2, A4, this is the same one, but this is now the opposite, right? And this is A1, A2 minus A3, A4. Okay, so uh, of course, this is one specific case when you can consider more general case when you have P, P spaces. I will try to explain to you one I'm interested in, especially this one, right? Because you can ask me, well, what is that? So you can consider, of course, a general case when you consider P spaces or a, a, a more complex uh, chemistry uh, setting. And then, I mean, when you have uh, uh, your, your QI, I mean, usually they have uh, this form that can be written as minus mu i minus mu i it will be the product from i equal one to p now of the ai at the power new i minus the product from i equal one to p of the i at the power new i. So this is a general setting. You have a lot of of uh, species now, they are interact, and basically the new i, so this is the one when you have a production, and this is the loss, right, the loss term for each new i. And uh, uh, what I should say like this is, of course, now 
there is, if you want to see uh, the order of the, of the system, right? So here it's quadratic because here, uh, here you have, I mean, it's clearly quadratic, right? And uh, if you want to see the, the power of the things, what you have to look at is, of course, for the, the one, the important one is the one which is the production. And this is this number, the sum from y equal 1 to p of uh, the new i, right? The number of ai that you have here. I should say that when you have, uh, uh, <clears throat> when you have uh, uh, simple chemistries, and usually the new i are uh, integers, but actually, it makes sense, and sometimes they have also new i, just uh, positive numbers, right? So it's, it makes sense to look at them for, for, for all of them. And uh, then, well, for people working in, in this, there was a very nice paper, which is due to Michel Pierre. So Pierre is a name, right? And uh, Schmidt, uh, 2000. And uh, basically, they showed that uh, whenever you consider whenever you consider a system such that this of the new i is bigger than two, strictly bigger than two, then you can find a dimension so n, I should have said because I'm looking this, is for x in Rn. Right, so it's the dimension. So usually it's R3, which you consider, right? But you can consider for any n. Then you can find an n such a, and an initial value such that you have finite blow up, finite time blow up. So in some way, the case I mean, if you, put, if you put too much reaction, then you can have low up. And then the question, well, what happened? So in, so in, in some way, it seems that the, the two, right, if you want to have something which is true for all dimension, the two seems to be a limit case, right? And, uh, and actually, for this case, this is the case when we have the theorem. Theorem. Caputo first. And let's give a name for this system here. Yeah. And we claim that for any n, so any dimension, any initial value there exists A in C infinity of zero plus infinity of N, unique solution one. So what we show is that actually it is true that if you consider just the, the quadratic case, then the quadratic case for the quadratic case for any dimension, right, you will have uh, you will have a global solution. Uh, actually, this is uh, this is slightly more, uh, more than that. Uh, I've decided to, to really present everything on this because it will be simpler, right? But actually what we show is that there exists uh, a number which is explicit, right? I mean, I, I cannot remember it, but there exists a, a number which depends on n, positive, right? Such that uh, uh, if this sum, i equal one to, to p of the new i, is smaller than uh, two plus epsilon n, then the theorem holds. Right, but of course this epsilon n converts to zero when n converts to plus infinity, right, which, which does not uh, violate this, uh, this condition. Right. So, yep. Yeah, the, this is a vector, yeah. So this is, a, in this case, this is AI1. I mean, there is four, four components, right? So, it's a, a, so you, you have four components. This is a four initial component. You take them bounded in L, bounded and in L1. Actually, in a LP, P big enough is depending on N and in L1, right? And then uh, you, can, you can show that you have a, a, a global uh, smooth. 
solution. Oh. Hmm? Exactly. When it's smooth, it's unique, and you have everything. So, uh, so basically, basically the, 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 this result of Pierre and Schmidt killed the pit, uh, the, all the, 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 the will in, uh, in this area to try to do things. And before 06, before 2006, actually, the only result which was known, it was for the three species. Right, when you have A1, A2 plus A3. And why, why, why is this thing is, is really easier? Because, because it, is, uh, it is linear with respect to A1, right? So you can have a maximum principle with, with respect to A1. There is no maximum principle in general for the system. You cannot use all, those, uh, all, all these kind of tools. So that's why this is, it was better. And basically, that was it. There was nothing, no, nothing new uh, about that. And then, uh, then there is uh, Devilet and Fellner, who began to be interesting in this, and especially there was a result with uh, Pierre and uh, Vauvel. Basically, they showed that in the case, so now I'm talking about the, really this case, the quadratic case, so this is uh, uh, well, quadratic case, right? I mean, for one, for this system, and n equal two, and you will see that the dimension two is actually very special, then uh, you have weak solution, global weak solution. So even global weak solution was not known before. And in some ways, it is through this paper that they brought uh, all the, I mean, uh, uh, these kind of problems into our community. Yeah. For every time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So this means, yeah, it's not a small time problem. Of sex. Okay, and from there, so from there, there was, there was a, a series of results. So then, uh, I mean, actually, uh, hearing from the results in a conference like this, I, I get interesting to, the, to, the, to this kind of problem. I like it very much. And uh, we began to work with uh, Thierry, with, uh, Thierry. And uh, we did, so it was in 2010. We began to put the methods that we will consider in place. And, uh, uh, and we did, so global regularity first for n equal 2 again, because n equal 2 is uh, pretty important. Then uh, there was, again, Devilet and Fellner. So DF will be Devilet and Fellner, <laughs> this other team, who, uh, who get the same with other techniques. And actually, I'm cheating here. Right? I say after, I put, I put mine before, even if it's 10. Uh, it's because, I mean, we, we, we put it actually they, they get a result after, but uh, uh, this one was published in uh, Annals of the Economal Superior, and this is a very nice journal. I'm very happy to have it here, but it takes some time to publish, I mean, to, to, to get things done. So, uh, and, and finally, after, so again, with, uh, you know, actually with Caputo, so it's where Caputo came into, uh, so it means Caputo, Vassar, we were able to do it, and you will understand also why this is easier, so uh, global regularity for when the sum when the sum of uh, the new i is strictly smaller than two. Right, so this is everything below the two, even when they are just positive, right? And, but we miss the two, and uh, uh, just to be, to be completely complete, right? So this is then, again, Devilet and Fellner, so they get the result for any n, but, uh, for any n, but on the uh, smallest condition on the di, and I will try also to show why it's very natural, right? So if the di are very small, I mean, very, very close to each other, up to a certain epsilon n, then they are able to get uh, the full regularity, and, and basically now we are able to do it uh, and without any condition on the di. Uh, so why is it more interesting all, all this? So the techniques that we use, so it's really two teams, right? And we, we don't use at all the same kind of techniques, right? So, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and they were also interesting, and there's another uh, series of work, and it won't, you won't be surprised by it. Actually, they developed also, uh, so David Newton Feldner, uh, a theory in order to look at all the system for a long time, right? And what they get is exponential, exponential uh, k 
in time. And this is using uh, uh, the relative, relative entropy method. Right, so this actually is really using the, all the techniques that uh, uh, Laurent explained this week. Right, actually showed it on the system in the linear case. If you remember, he said that on the linear case, you can use any entropy, and it is with the L2. When you're in the system case, you cannot use the L2. You will really have to use the entropy that I would present, the A log, log A, right? I mean, the L log L. Uh, and on top of it, it's very important to have uh, the L infinity control, so that's why they were actually interesting in these kind of regularity things, because in order to get this, you need to control the L infinity norm and show that it does not go uh, more than a polynomial. And when you have that, then you can put all the methodology that, uh, that is introduced, I mean, for the system and get this kind of result. So that's why they were interesting in, in, in this. Um, Okay, so the first thing I should say is so what was the use? And the starting point, and this is pretty natural for them, was, to, was the result which was actually here, and uh, let's say it's a dual argument, which was in this paper, and they use it to, <coughs> as a basis of all uh, their theory, and uh, it's working on the total density O of Tx, which is a sum from O equal one to, let's say, P at this point, Ai, right? So this is the, the sum of all the Ai. And by a structure, I mean, the, as Laurent said, last time, actually, you have a conservation of all the mass, right, uh, when you have this transformation. So uh, when you sum, sum up all the Qi, actually, they disappear, right? So you can just, sum up these things, this is a P and you look at what you have, and you have an equation of the form dt rho plus, well, plus Laplacian of the sum of the di a i, and I will try, I will work, I mean, write it that way, is Laplacian of something that I will write a d, but which depends on dt x, rho equals zero, where, where what, where the d, by definition, is, well, the sum of what I have, which is the di ai over the sum of the ai. Right. So in some way, you have on this, you have a sort, so it depends on tx, you have no, no control on it except this, but you have a control on the ellipticity, right? Because you, you, you see that uh, this d of tx will be between the smaller of the d and the bigger, right? So this is the soup of all the di. And this is the nth of all the di. So this, this is a kind of uh, this is a kind of uh, elliptic equation, right? So if all the di are the same, then it's just the it equation, right? And then everything is easy, is easy because then the rho are bounded, and when everything is bounded, then it's smooth, right? So that's why that's why this condition. Makes sense, right? If you are close to something which is almost constant, where well, constant is easy, so things will be easier, right? So that's, that's the first thing is, is pretty, easy, pretty clear here. Otherwise, well, when you have something which you don't know about it, just ellipticity, you are a bit in a, a situation. I mean, this is uh, usually you have uh, two situations when you consider. If you remember what uh, Luis Caffarelli said on Wednesday, he said there's basically two family of elliptic kind of equation, wherever you work on local or actually even uh, non-local, right? There is one which is uh, in the non-divergence case, right? And is when the D is outside. <laughs> and there is one which is a divergence case is when the D is in between, right? It's divergence of D gradient. So here it's a dual case of, of, the, uh, of, of the first one, right? The D is inside. So it, it, changed, it changed a bit the, the game here, right? Uh, but what Pierre and uh, Schmidt showed, and actually by duality, because you know far more on the uh, non-conservation non form, right? So this is a dual formula of the non-conversation form, right? If you multiply by, by u, you flip the Laplacian on the other one, right? And uh, on this one, so they were able to show that, well, if, uh, actually, when you have a solution like this, with initial value smooth enough, then actually rho, is in L2 in time and uh, uh, space. And this is for any dimension, right? 
So they were able to show that actually Rho is double integral pool, right? Uh, square integral pool. And, uh, and then it makes sense when you have an equation like this to say, well, then if it is square integral pool, you should be able to get weak solution, right? And, uh, and having a stronger solution, then things get more complicated. So now what I will try to, to show you is what n equal two is really a specific case with respect to this norm, right? And for this, I will actually begin to, 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 to tell you about, uh, about our proof. So their proof basically are based on energy methods. So I mean, a lot of things which come from somewhere which is natural in kinetic theory. And uh, uh, we, we begin to work on the, well, the system which was here uh, in, uh, in, in a more uh, parabolic point of view, elliptic point of view, right? So I mean, more in the spirit, even if it is far easier in this context of what Yanyan does, right? So blow up method and, and things like this. So if you look at this kind of equation, uh, at this point of view, so the first thing that we want to do in some way, it's, it's a bit like a Liouville theorem. Also, it's, it's not a Liouville theorem. It's far simpler than that, right? But basically, it's to say, well, let's first look in a specific situation when we can control the nonlinearity, right? When we know that the nonlinearity is not too big, right? And, uh, and for this, since we will want to do blow up, we fix, we should look at this on a fixed ball or a fixed uh, domain, right? So let's say that uh, we define BR, which is just the ball centered at zero and uh, radius r, right? And the q, the qr will be for minus r zero cross br, right? So this is just a fixed domain in time. I take minus r to zero in time, right? So it's time x. Okay, and the lemma is pretty simple. It says that there exists a delta positive, which depends only on the dimension, but the dimension is fixed. You have a delta fixed, right? Such that if, ah, I forgot to talk about the entropy. Okay, that's fine. Is if the integral on Q2 is uh, of what of the AI of the sum one to four in this case of the AI log of one plus AI dx dt is smaller than eta, then All the AI of TX are bounded by one, let's say, for TX in Q1. So this term says, says that X here. Right, so this is my, let's say, minus two, my Q2, right? So if here I can control something which is very close to the entropy, right? I just to make it positive, one plus AI. So it's like something which is related to the entropy. If I control the entropy there, then actually on, so this is Q2, then on Q1, I control my A. Right? I just want to, actually it is enough to show that it's bounded again, right? Because then by energy method, it's very easy to show that it's infinity. So it's just AI, right? So, Okay, so why AI log, and let me, so this, this is, the proof of these things is, yes. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I have to choose. I like both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it means that, you know, if you control, if you control the log here, I mean, something of the log here, then you control everything. So, uh, there is several things I should say. Delta is small. Small enough. Well, there exists a delta which is small. There exists a delta which is small. So that for whatever the solution that you take of one, right, so it's for any u solution, any u a solution to one in Q2, if you have that, then you have that. Right? But, the, but the, the, the delta does not depend on the solution. It's universal, right? It's an universal thing. So, uh, 
So several things. So the first thing is to say that actually what we use here is D Georgi. And as we said on Wednesday, I mean, this, this is an old method, <laughs> right? And usually, I mean, it is pretty strong and it's not the first time that it is used on this kind of system. Actually, there is all the, the, the first one who use this kind of system is Alikakos. Alikakos, a long time ago, right, would already work on that. The difference here that we have is if you remember the equation that I, uh, that I erased, this is a quadratic thing, right? So what, what is the idea of this kind of theorem? It says that, well, if you can make it, the quadratic term, if you can control the, the, the source term, the bad term, the nonlinear term, you can say, well, it is small enough, then this is the viscosity, the, 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 the diffusion here that kills everything and smooths everything, right? And then you, you, you are able to control it. So what I claim here is that I can control the strength of my uh, quadratic term by something which is almost linear. Right? And that's the big thing. That's the thing that I, we, we don't do like Alikakos, actually, that which doesn't use the Georgie, but uh, Nash Moser, right? You really have to be careful and to, to have something, right? Because otherwise it's not possible, right? So there is a way, there is a way in some way to deplete enough <laughs> the, uh, this term in other the, the quadratic term to make it controllable for what we want, right, in terms of regularity by something which is almost linear. And that's a big gain here. That's the begin that we will be able to push actually to any dimension. Otherwise, there was no, no possibility. Quadratic uh, for this lemma. How important is the fact that the right hand side is the same for everything? Or it could be any quadratic thing. So what is important? Yeah. What is important what is, uh, is, is entropy inequality. So let me write it down. The entropy inequality. I mean, DJG is an energy method, right? I mean, it's, it's really based on an energy thing. So the fact that, or entropy. So everything is quite different from the point of view of Devillette and Fellner, except this. We still work with entropy. So this is, this, I'm still in some way in the topic of the, of the week because it's based on entropy, right? That's, uh, that's, the, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's the thing. So what is the entropy? Well, here you have to, to, to live with the physical entropy that you have here. And uh, since I put uh, delta, thanks to Alessio, I still have the eta that I can use here. And my entropy, I will call it eta then. And this eta, which depends on A, which depends on all the components, right? A1, A2, A3, A4, right? And uh, this is the sum from A equal 1 to 4 of the AI log of AI, right? So this is a quantity. And same thing, if you take the system, and multiply by log A, AI, integrate, well, you have something which is dt of eta of A plus, and there is a diffusion, it's the same diffusion that you've seen with uh, Laurent, right? And this is a gradient of square root of AI squared, I guess there is a four here, not very important, minus the Laplacian of uh, eta of A, Right, and, and what, and here, the nice thing is, it's not this, it's the sum of the i. So, sorry, I want to read it too fast. So it's the sum from i equal one to four of uh, the i, Laplacian of the i, of Well, I have to write it down, right? So this is really this Laplacian of AI log of AI, right? This is, because all the DI are different, okay? But this, I can manage, and uh, the thing is here, we'll be able to say that it is non-negative. So in some way, the entropy you don't see, in some way the entropy depletes naturally the, uh, the, the Q term, and here the proof of this inequality is exactly the same that for Boltzmann, actually, uh, those are the proofs that you've seen with, uh, with Devillette, because actually what I've done here, I took the sum from i equal one to four, I multiply the equation by AI, right, and multiply by minus one, I plus one, I mean, multiplying by the QI, right? And in some way, I will answer your question here. In this special case, because of the form that we have, right, what you end up is, is two plus, is ln of A1 plus ln of A2 minus 
ln of a3 minus ln of a4. So basically, what you get is ln of a1, a3 minus ln of a2, a4, multiplying by this, the form here, a2, a4 minus a1, a3. Right? This is the thing. And now, if you put an x for this, a y for this, this is ln of x minus ln of y times x, mi x minus y. And those two functions are increasing, right? So these are two uh, with a minus. Ln is increasing, x is increasing, right? They are equal to x equal y. So at the end, these things has to be always negative, right? I mean, non-positive, right? So it's exactly it's a, the proof of the, for, 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 for Boltzmann, right? It's exactly the same here. So that's what's important, is that you have a depletion of uh, the quadratic term. But okay, but it's just for the entropy, right? And uh, just the entropy, I mean, if, if we knew that entropy uh, controls the infinity, that would be great, but usually it's not true, right? But this is this depletion here that we will use to, yep. So in principle, if you would have for every p a smart function like the entropy or anything like that, it could work. I mean, it's like. Well, so what you will see, uh, what you certainly will, will see if I have time, is that actually this depletion, when I work here, deplete of one, of, of one power. So if you have something, so that's why here it will work in all dimensions. You have something which is quadratic, and in some way in the DeGeorge machinery, it will go something which is well, almost linear up to the log, right? So it, it deplete one power. Right? Okay. So if you have uh, p, p things, the so power p, so it deplete just one. You have p minus one, and that's why things, uh, you, you still have blob. And actually, we know that there is blow up, you know, for, for, for bigger than p. For so epsilon n will be less than one in your theorem. So epsilon n will be, well, it depends on n. So it depends on n, okay. It depends on n. Actually, on dimension one, Dimension one, you have more. I do not remember, but you, are, you, you, you can handle bigger power. You can handle the three. Uh, I do not remember okay. the exact things. It's uh, dimension two when things begin to be really at the quadratic that there is some, some difficulty. Of the? Sorbonne inequality? No. Uh, here? Uh, no, you mean after? The Epsilon. Francis. Well, okay. It's okay. No, no, I don't, no, no, no. You will see. You will see. I mean, I hope. <laughs> I try to take the time. Uh, okay, so that's, that's the first thing. And when you have these kind of things, then uh, uh, why we do this kind of thing when a fixed uh, Q is because then we want to blow up, right? I mean, the, uh, you've seen Yayan did this all the time, right? And you blow up, you, you blow up. And why you blow up? So what, what is in this uh, easy case? What do you think you want? You want to say, well, I want to show that it is bounded, actually, right? I mean, locally bounded, and it is smooth at the point. And uh, let me put here. Now, this is my T, this is my X. I have my solution here, it involves, let's fix a T, let's fix an X, and let's say here I want to show that at this point this is smooth, right? So at this point, so I want to show this, and I say, well, let's blow up. So what it means blow up? It means to look here, so it will be a little q here, and here epsilon squared, right? So you take these small things here, right? And you try, and you, you, you block the things in order to, to have the solution which is there. But you want to do it by keeping the structure of the equation. So this means that you have to do it along the, and again, I mean, <laughs> and this is again and again in, the, in different situations, in, in order to, to keep the structure of the equation, right? So you need to find what is called the universal, the universal scaling of the equation, and by this it means what? It means that you, you want to consider u epsilon of a new variable, which has a local variable here, let's say s y, s in time, y in x, and you want this to be, well, a blow up of u at the point t, so t plus epsilon squared s, x plus epsilon y, right? but you want to do it in order that when you do this, you keep exactly the same equation because it's a nonlinear equation. You have to find the number of epsilon that you have to put here. This depends now of your system. In this case, trust me, is epsilon squared. Right? So this means, what it means, it means that if u is solution of my equation, for all tx fix, when I zoom this like this, the u epsilon is also solution of my equation. Right. But my, no, my, now my u epsilon, when my u lives here, my, so this is, this is the life of u, 
I transform it to come here. This is where my Epsilon live, right? So this is where is the things. If I can say then, whatever the time is, if I zoom in off, I can assure that my nonlinearity is not very strong, then, then I will be locally bounded after a certain epsilon, and so locally it is smooth, right? So usually when you can do this, it means that you have a system which is called uh, uh, critical uh, or subcritical. It means that you have a quantity which controls the scaling. And usually when you have that, you don't do this kind of thing, right? There is also methods, energy method or whatever, right? The thing is here, it will be more complicated to go to the next step. But let's see that for n equal to, it works. And what it was for n equal to is exactly because this norm, this norm for n equal to, which was given by Schmidt and, uh, and Pierre, for n equal to control the uh, scaling, the universal scaling. So another way to say it is this norm is, I mean, in the jargon, is uh, critical for the for the system, and what it means, it mean, well, it just means that well, you have something which is, which is a, a global quantity now. And for this global quantity, you want to know that when you zoom, if you gain something, because you have a zoom, you have to gain something, right? So you look at what you get, and how you do this? Well, you look at the L2 norm in Tx. Well, this will be in the Q epsilon of u of uh, t tilde x tilde d tilde x tilde, dx tilde, right? So this is, and this is uh, the A, the sum of the AI squared. Right, so this is uh, L2, or the rho. Let's do the rho, it's the same, right? Almost, so let's do the rho, the rho squared, the sum, okay. So you have this quantity, right, which is exactly the L2 norm that you have here, right? And you want to see how this compares to the, the U there, right? And if you do the change of variable, well, you have epsilon, it becomes epsilon four, epsilon four, and there is two epsilon for the change of variable in time, two for the, for, for the change of variable in x. So it turns out that actually these things is actually exactly the integral of Q1 or Q2, well, let's put two epsilon and it will be Q2, right, of uh, the rho squared for uh, the local variable, right? So this is on S, Y, DS, DY. And what it means, uh, by this I say that it controls uh, the L2 norm, because what it means is that, I mean, this quantity, whatever the point that you take, because the L2 norm is uh, bounded, I mean, this is just the Lebesgue theorem, for any point, when you zoom, right, at one point, you integrate only on the smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller ball, it converges to zero. And whatever the point you, you put, right, when you zoom, it converges to zero. So this means that along the, the zoom, when epsilon goes to zero, this actually, will converge to zero, right? And if it converges to zero, well, the L2 norm controls this uh, A log L norm, right? So for epsilon small enough, this will be small, and then locally it's bounded, right? So it depends on, on the point when you, have, you are, but you know that at every point you can do that, right? Okay, so basically in the jargon it means that the L2 norm is critical for this, and usually when you have this, you can do it with energy method. That was uh, David Etten and Fellner did, right? So when we did this, we were interesting to show, I mean, all the case, 1D, and etc. but that's, that's the thing. Okay, so where we go from there if we want to do higher dimension, right? Well, if we do a higher dimension, and we want to use these things, <laughs> we need to find a global control a, a, a global quantity, like the L2, so L2 is bad, right? Because a global quantity which will control my, the, the system and which is independent, I mean, uh, we, we shrink through the, through, the, through the system, right? And surprisingly, there is one. And the one is, at least formally, is Laplacian minus one, uh, Laplacian minus one rule. So let's give a name for this. U of Tx is equal to Laplacian minus one of rho of Tx. I consider this quantity. And why this quantity is good? Because actually you have an equation for these things and it's pretty easy. You have DTU minus, or I put a plus. That's sorry, it's not a plus, right? It's a minus, yeah. Uh, because I talk about dual, well, yeah. No, no, but this is this one, okay? This is a good one, <laughs> okay? So if you take Laplacian minus one, you have Laplacian minus one, this one disappear, and this is Laplacian of Laplacian minus one. So this means actually it verifies the equation, but now in the non-conservative non form, right? So you have 
is a D here of Tx, Laplacian of u equals u. And so you have an infinite norm of this, right? So that's, I mean, that's a triviality. It means that actually Laplacian minus one of rho, so now you can use here the maximum principle on this quantity, on the Laplacian minus one u, right? So these things at Tx, or let's say at T, an infinity, is always smaller than what you have at t equals zero. Okay. And, and, and why I like these things, I mean, it seems to be pretty, pretty weak, right? I mean, we want to control LP norm by something which is uh, uh, very weak. But the good thing of these things is that it is critical for the system, right? And the way to see this, you can see, I mean, when you derivate here, right, you put one epsilon out, right? So Laplacian minus one actually take out the epsilon squared, right? It's, uh, uh, I mean, antiderivative, right? So you take the epsilon squared, and so if you take now the L infinity norm, it's the same, right? So this means that I should have put A at this point, right? So this means that this quantity, I mean, through the scaling, is actually preserved, right? So that's good, but this is typically a, a critical case with respect to, first, first, that's good, well, there is two problems now, right? There is two problems solve, and that's the key. That would be it. I mean, the first is that uh, Laplacian minus one of rho, because it is an L infinity norm, does not shrink. when epsilon goes to zero. Well, I mean, we want to, sh to shrink things, right? Because we want to make things when we, when we zoom, we want to make these things small, right? And the L infinity norm, right? I mean, when it was the LP norm, I could say when I integrate on a smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller things, it becomes smaller. But here is a soup. So when it's the soup, it does not change, right? So, so it does not, it doesn't shrink, right? It's a typical problem that we have when you have a, a critical things which, which doesn't shrink, right? So that's the first thing. And uh, the, uh, the second one is, well, how to control L log L from Laplacian minus one L infinity. Because even if I am able to say that locally it is small, right? It is not in this uh, weak norm that I want to control things. Is is this L1 norm, right? So, uh, so the, 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 the second, so there's two things to get there. Let's begin with the second one. So the first thing is that actually we control almost this because, because we, have, we can remember that rho is positive or non-negative. And there is this property, so it means it's a measure, right? And there is this property that uh, you control measure to control uh, uh, when, when you have a sign, right? So the measure is controlled by any weak norm, right? And it's very easy to show this because you just need to find the integral, right? So this means that actually, if you consider the, if you want to find the, the on Q2, right, let's say, on these things, if you want to control the rule, right, the rule of Tx, well, put a, phi of x, dx, a, a fixed function phi, right, which actually will control everything on rule there. Well, well, this you can always write that it is the integral uh, on uh, Laplacian minus one rho of tx, Laplacian phi dx, right? And so this thing is smaller than Laplacian minus rho infinity, Laplacian phi L1. Right, but it's just say uh, what I said, is that actually when you know that something is positive, then any weak norm controls the L1 norm, right? So that's, that's the thing. So this means that you control L1, right? So you control L1, L infinity L1, right? And the only thing now that you want is to go from L infinity L1 to uh, just a bit more, right? And there, that's just, well, we will not, that's just an application of, uh, of the alexandrov backelman pucci theorem. Is a dual of it, right? Dual of uh, 
Alexandrov, Bakelman, Pucci, Times, you had the couple of Krilov, so, I mean, whatever. I mean, this is, uh, and this, <laughs> and what this theorem says is the same, which, is on, which works on the equation, it will V, minus D Laplacian V equal F. Right? And you want to know what do you need on F in order to have V bounded. Right? And it gives you that actually, well, it gives you that the V L infinity is bounded by Kenston times the F in, uh, if you have no, no boundary condition. Right? So you have, and if I remember well, it's N plus one, right? because it's a parabolic case. Uh, NT, NT X, right? And basically, well, well, what, what is again is to say that the equation on rho is a dual of these things, right? And because it is a dual of these things, by duality, well, there's a bit of work, but let me be fast here. From these things, you are able to show that then uh, the infinity, then you have that the norm of rho in ln plus one over n, so slightly more than one, depending on n. This thing is controlled by a constant uh, of rho in L infinity L1. Right? So the dual of L infinity is L1, and you, you work on this thing. So, I mean, you have to, be, to, to work a bit because this is a bundle, we have to do it uh, locally, right? But basically, it's working of this, and in the, the case of elliptic case, it was actually uh, already observed uh, by uh, Rivière. a long time ago, right? That, that, that this equation was a dual and you can get a bit, right? But then it's, it's, it's done, right? So in, in two, we have two, two steps. But first step, we say, well, then actually, this weak norm control the, the total mass locally. And then this local mass, because this uh, parabolic equation, which is really, really, really uh, worst than the equation, the other one, right? You have the three. If you remember what we said, he said the best in terms of regularity is uh, non the non uh, the non-divergence form, right? Because basically you get two, two derivatives, right? And then there is uh, energy one when you have the, the, the D in the middle, and then, well, you get one derivative. If the A has some regularity, then you get just one more uh, in, in terms of U. And here you have the third one. Well, basically you don't gain much, but you gain a little bit of integrability, right? And it's exactly what we need here. Right, this is to gain a bit of integrability. And here you see, for any dimension, for any dimension, this will control the A log L. Right? So, this, this because, so that's why we can do for all the dimensions again. Right? That's a, a key thing. So, okay, so this thing is fine. This thing is fine. If we can shrink these things, if we can shrink these things, we will shrink. And by shrinking, we make this small. These things control this, which controls this. We have this small. Then we have control our nonlinearity, weirdly, because A log L is enough to control it in half, right? And we have the regularity, right? So now, why we shrink? Uh, why we shrink? And the thing is because we can get slightly better than what I claim there. as a lemma. Actually, if you take, if you take rho, and I won't uh, work, so if you take rho non-negative, and again, we'll use that the fact that our rho is non-negative, solution of dt rho minus uh, Laplacian of d of tx. I put the tx, remember that it is not a constant, right? Rho equals zero. Then, uh, there exists alpha, or I should say for any n, that the dimension, there exists the alpha, which depends on n, and if you give the epsilon of n the little bit of room that we have, then the uh, Laplacian minus one of uh, rho at the time t in uh, C alpha of Rn is smaller than a certain power I put this just to, to show that it's a regularization effect here. It's not a, a propagation. So that is beta. Not very important. Constant Laplacian minus rho zero and infinity. So we show that there is a little bit more than an infinity. You have a, a C alpha. And this C alpha, now, well, this makes things shrink. 
right? Because you have more regularity, so you have something which now is showing to the, the, doing the things, right? But now, so, and again, right, you, you don't gain much, but you gain just a little bit, right? And you get in, I mean, this is a regularization effect. It's just who says that you have it equals you, you have it. There is really a regularization things which happen. <coughs> And, uh, and the two things, I mean, the, it's not any solution here. Again, the positivity of war is important. And uh, let me, at least for the specialist, to show you where it comes from, because at the end, it's pretty, it's pretty easy, actually. If you write the equation, dt u, so this is a u, right? u is Laplacian minus rho, one rho. And let's say that I want to consider with a minimum d bar of Laplacian of u, Right, so these things is equal to uh, to the di of tx to the Laplacian, no, to the what? No, so this one is in uh, conservative form. So it's di minus d bar Laplacian of u, right? Because it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a solution of that. So I mean, just, uh, I mean, just the right things. But what is this? This is rho. And this is a minimum, so this thing is positive. And now I play the same game comparing the soup and saying the same game, what you get is negative. So you have that actually the u is a sub-solution for a certain fixed d and a, sub, a super solution for another one, right? And when you have this structure, you can show that then you have the Arnak inequality. Which gives the, the, the C alpha. And why? Well, uh, I mean, this is pretty easy because it is really a constant, but if I want to do, to say in one minute, uh, why it's true, then I will say, well, basically, Luis Caffarelli gave the proof on Wednesday using D. Georgi. You don't need D. Georgi here, I mean, it's too so simple. But, but just to show you, I mean, to relate to something that you've seen on Wednesday, right? Why it's true? Because, because if you remember, he said when you want to, to show that when you have a something in uh, Q2 and uh, you want to go to Q1, right, and you know that you are between minus one and one, so you have a function which is there. And you want to say that then the soup minus the f on Q2 decrease, right? This is what we call oscillation lemma, right? So if you have this, then again, doing blow up and do it again and again, you get the, you, you, you get the C alpha, right? So if you want this, you say, well, let's look if there is more, if the function is more below zero and more above zero, right? And let's say that it's more, I'm not sure in my case, Let's say it's more below, right? So there is more values here when I am below, right? And then I say, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's, really, it's, it's really pulled back, right? I mean, pulled down. So it means that certainly I will be able to, to decrease by above, right? And when you want to use this, well, basically you use what? You use the fact that, well, you have, you have a sub-solution. And because you have a sub-solution here, you can use all the DGORGI techniques or something else. Actually, here you take the Rousseau coin function, but whatever. You can use the things. You can show this and show that then, well, with a two-step, there is a lambda here, right, when you decrease the oscillation, right? And that's it. This is the things. And when you have those things, well, this usually how you do this. You know that your function is bounded here, right? And, uh, okay, so you know that here it is it decreases, and you do it again, well, but then here it decreases, and you do it again, you zoom, and you say, but hey, it decreases, and et cetera, and you can see that there's a C alpha structure which comes in, right? So when you have, again, something which is at order one in a Q1, you do it by rescaling, 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 and you have the C alpha structure, right? I mean, it's almost the proof, actually, right? This is, this is very, very typical in, the, in the, uh, this kind of theory. Okay, so I have uh, two minutes, right? So in two minutes, uh, I plan to show a bit of the proof of uh, DiGiorgi, so you can see that uh, it was a bit optimistic. So I won't do this, but at least I will, sh I I will try to show you uh, two minutes, yeah, to convince you, not sure, but convince you that uh, you gain uh, uh, here 
when you do the, the, when you work on the DGG with respect to the, in, the entropy, you gain one, you kill one power of uh, the, 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 the nonlinearity, right? And uh, and why is that? It's because the fundamental things for the uh, DGG energy, the DGG method, is you have a function here, right, which is let's say A, I mean all the AI, so we do it for all the AI, right? And you cut all the AI, all, all the function together, right? And this is, and you go from, let's say, to one, because I want to show that there is nothing there, right? So I have a CK here. This is a sequence which dynamically converts to one. And for each K fixed, I want to consider the entropy above CK, right? and dissipation above CK. So basically, what I want to consider is a sort of thing, a UK, which will be, goes, I mean, we can think of something which is basically all the AI minus K plus log of one plus AI minus CK. CK plus. The XDT, right? I mean, this is the strength. What I say will control the strength of uh, my function. It's almost the entropy. I mean, it, it's very close to the entropy. I just uh, one here. So it's like the entropy of something which is over CK, right? And if I have this UK, I mean, the game, what is the game is to show that this UK plus one will be bigger than CK UK beta or gamma with gamma bigger than one. So I won't show you how to do this, but this is basically the game. You want you have a sequence now. You have a sequence, right? The energy above, 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 and you want to compare them, and you can compare them in a nonlinear things like this. This blows up, but this is nonlinear R. So if the first one is very small, this will converge to zero, and it's exactly the same, which says that this is the delta. If u zero is smaller than delta, there is a delta depending only on this constant here, the c, such that then the limit of UK is equal to zero when K converges to plus infinity, but it converges toward to the energy which is here, and if the energy which is here is zero, it means that actually my U is smaller than one. So that's, that's the general framework. That's very nice, actually. Right? But this means what? This means that I need to be able to compare, to work on the entropy from one K to one K plus one. So I need to work on on the entropy, that it is not, is not here anymore, right? But not the real entropy, the entropy that I have just above CK. And this will be the last thing so I claim that I can control this. So DT of the sum of uh, the AI minus CK plus log of one plus AI minus CK plus Right, so this is the quantity that I want to control. This plus dissipation, so this good thing, right, is smaller than, well, to what? And that's why we have to see what we have. Well, this is what? This is the sum of the i of the ai minus ck plus qi of a. Well, these things I don't know, and it is very bad, because it's of the two, right? But what I say is that, well, these things is equal to the sum on i of ai minus ck plus qi of ai minus ck plus, and I put minus q of a, Q, uh, Q, uh, QI of A minus CK plus. And I guess I have a problem of, of sign here. Okay, this. So the first thing I say, this is negative. Be uh, no, I say this is negative, <laughs> right? Because now it's exactly the same structure that we add on the Q. So I kill the big value of the things. I adjust this, but this is Q minus Q of A. You see that the, the problem is when A is very big, but uh, I mean, these things kill one of the, kill the, the higher order of, 
of the things, right? So that's why you, you kill it here, right? So locally, if you're interested only on the entropy, when you do it step by step, you kill it, right? And the idea is because, well, is because, uh, because this uh, quantity, because you, you really work with uh, the physical entropy, not the L21, not an entropy, really, you, you stick to the entropy, and because you stick to the entropy, when you change from CK to CK plus one, you still kill, I mean, deplete, not kill completely, but deplete the non-linearity for the big value. Right? And that's why it works. And I think it's a good time to stop. <laughs>